All right, guys, so I've been messing with this motor, and uh, <laughs> this is a weird one. It, uh, it's got good compression or decent compression. What I'm gonna do is I might make this a two-part, I don't know yet. I'm gonna take the carb and everything back off, and I'm gonna pull the head off this thing. Let me get this carb and intake back off, and get the valve cover off, and see what we got going on. All right, guys, gotta get the valve cover off. It's 3.8. <laughs> That's funny, it's loose. Somebody's been in here tinkering. It's real loose. Oh, surprise, surprise, and they got RTV on it. <laughs> okay. So for the exhaust, it's gonna be a Torx. I'm gonna loosen it up, it's like a T45, it looks like, T40. T40, I believe. The exhaust is loose too. Somebody's had this head off. Somebody knows something here that I don't know. Um, I think with this exhaust, I'm going to have to... Okay, the pipe slides down into the muffler. So that's cool. Now I think you're going to have half inch or 9 16 on this head. And we'll pull this head off. Okay, what I did is I brought the motor up to top dead center on the compression stroke. You can see... These are, the rocker arms are loose. You can loosen them even more. It doesn't matter at this point. I think we're chasing a blowing motor. These are gonna be half inch. Quite a fuel hole. Pay attention to your length if this is something you're gonna be putting back together. These will have different lengths, a lot of these. You gotta make sure they go back in the right spot. Let me finish getting them out and I'll show you when we get the head off. All right guys, let's pull the head off together. Let's get this dilapidated valve cover gasket somebody's got on here. <laughs> and the best part is they made this themselves. <laughs> I'm surprised the head gasket actually looks good. Boy, there's a lot of carbon on the head. Now your push rods, you're going to have a metal push rod and aluminum push rod. I'll show you if we wind up putting this back together, which place they go. And surprisingly, huh, maybe the sleeve ain't loose on this. There's no scratches in the bore. Okay, well, might be putting a new head gasket on this and putting it back together. All right, guys, well, my bore scope lied to me. That wasn't the issue, so I'm going to get this head really cleaned up. I'm going to order a, a head gasket for this thing. We're going to get the proper valve cover gasket. That's why it was all oily. And I'll show you guys how to um, watch how you don't lose these caps. <laughs> get this all cleaned up really nice for the guy. I'll show you guys how to set the valve lash. All right, guys, welcome back. Let me bring you up to speed. I got the head cleaned up the best I could. Really make sure you clean up the valves and everything. I, a lot of times I'll take my thumb and push the valve and make sure I spray carb cleaner behind there. You can wire brush or whatever to get any carbon out. Make sure your ceiling surface is super clean. I want you to see the mower. Let me move my camera. You see the block right here? Took a wire brush, got that cleaned up, got everything really, really smooth, nice and clean. Uh, I did forget to mention to you guys when we started this video, taking the head off. Uh, the reason I took it off, there was so much oil and everything built up around there. I thought I saw something on my bore scope that I didn't see, but I knew this thing had an oil leak anyway, and these are common for blowing head gaskets. Uh, this one was seeping, so it was going to blow. Uh, we got to unlash these rocker arms to be able to put this back together. Let me show you. It's just a 5 8 There's a set screw in here to stop them when you put them back in. But for reassembly, just back them off. We'll get that uh, set screw backed off, and I'll show you guys how to lash these valves when we get the head on. Just back them off. Okay, now we're going to put the rocker arms, or the push rods back in. Wipe them up. Okay, you're going to slip your head gasket on. 
backwards. Let me figure out the direction. It'll sit on your dowel pins that are in your block. Just like that. Now put your head on. All the head bolts on this motor are all the same length. You gotta pay close attention because there are some motors where you're gonna have different length head bolts when you're working on this stuff, guys. Gotta line up the dowel pins on your head. You'll feel our seat right in there. Now start, start getting your bolts in. Get a couple bolts started. And then I'll be right back to you guys with the torque specs for the head. And then we'll get the push rods in, the valve cover back on, and we'll be off to the races. These are going to be 220 um, inch pounds, which comes out to about 18.33 foot pounds. And uh, here's your sequence right there. I'll leave it there in case anybody is doing this. Uh, so let me get them all torqued down to the right spec here, and then we'll get the uh, push rods in. I always go back to guys when I get all these done. I'll just go through them all real quick and double check every single one of them, make sure everything's torqued to spec. Now you got an aluminum and a steel push rod. Your aluminum, remember, heat, steel, less heat or no heat, whatever you want to go by, aluminum. Intakes aluminum, exhaust is steel. And you can tell the exhaust valve is obviously letting the exhaust gas flow out. And you'll be able to see on your rods the original mark from the guides. You're going to slip them in there. You'll feel them seat. Slip the aluminum one in. And then we'll have to bring the engine up to top dead center on the compression stroke and we'll set the latch. You can always tell when your rods are in too by the old markings on them where they ride in this guide. And then when you rotate the motor to bring it up on the compression stroke, I put something in there and I can feel the top of the piston come up and they'll both be in the same position. You know you're on the compression stroke. These are T15s. Just loosen up these stoppers. That's just so once you get the valves lashed, you don't have no problems. Okay, now, I like to call these, I guess you could say, I just, I, I forget the proper name, I'll call these the little buttons. Make sure you put those on top of your uh, valves, like that. Bring your rocker arms around. We'll just, right now we'll just bring it up close just to hold everything in the position. There are some model Briggs out there too um, where these studs will actually back out of the block, or back out of the head, I'm sorry, and they'll actually set your valve lash off and the thing will run like hell and you'll never be able to figure it out. You'll be thinking it's your carburetor and 50 other things. Let me get my feeler gauges and let me give you the specs. All right, for your intake right here, you're gonna have three to five thousandths. So I'm gonna use a four thousandths. You're gonna slip your feeler gauge in right here. Back your nut off. And you just want that feeler gauge to have just a little bit of rub. Just be able to slide in and out. I might actually have to modify this feeler I have. Right there. And then for your exhaust, you're going to want five to seven thousandths. So we'll see if I have a six. If not, we're gonna go with five. I have a six, we're gonna go with six. Put your feeler gauge in right here. Back your rocker arm nut off till the gauge fits in. You just want it to just slip in there like that. Now, take and hold right here and tighten your set screw. Just like that. Same thing on your intake valve. Now once you get these lashed, I always double check them make sure that they're correct. And what I will do is I'll roll the motor over a few times and I'll check them again. Because the last thing you want to do is have to pull the 
valve cover back off because you got the valves last wrong. Okay, and I'll roll the motor over and see how you can see the valves now moving correctly. Always make sure you do that, guys. You need to put one of these back together. So we'll bring her back up to top dead center on the compression stroke. Spin her easy. You'll see both valves relax. And you'll feel her come up to TDC, top dead center. Now, check your four thousandths on your intake. And check your six thousandths on your exhaust. Simple as that, guys. Doesn't get no simpler. Anybody can do it. Now, valve cover gasket. And I'll tell you what the torque spec is for the valve cover bolts. We're going to go with uh, 70 inch pounds for the valve cover bolts. There's a new gasket on like that homemade crap they had on there. I don't know why people do shit like that, but they get themselves in a bind and want to get it done and don't have the right stuff. So instead of ordering it, they just do whatever in the hell they think is okay. I guess we all been there. That's how you learn. So let me get them tightened down and let me torque them down to 70 inch pounds and I'll get the rest of this motor back together. I'll just do them crisscross. Doesn't take much on these guys. Just want it to seal up good. Okay, I'll get the carb on, get the top cover back on. I'm not gonna bore you guys all that stuff and let's see if this thing will run. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up for the video on the tractor. Uh, it had a blown fuse, there was some electrical safety switches disconnected I had to sort through. So stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna put a Chinese uh, Amazon compression release on the OEM Briggs & Stratton cam. And this time I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to put the piece on and everything, because I know I got a lot of questions last time. The video got a ton of hits. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Stay tuned, we'll get it running.